Hey YouTube, what's going on? James here with my uh, second vlog since I've uh, decided to come back to YouTube. Um, got a couple of uh, news related things, you know, like things that are coming up in uh, Hollywood and like TV, movies, stuff, whatever. And I also saw a couple of movies, so I'm going to touch upon them briefly and then hopefully get a more detailed review of them up later. Um, so we're going to get right into it. My camera doesn't really have that much memory on it, so let's dive right into it. Um, first off, we'll start with the news. Um, TV-wise, Doctor Who returns August 23rd. It is a Saturday, it's at 8 o'clock, the premiere comes back, or comes in. This is the introduction of the new Doctor. Um, for those of you who don't know, it's uh, Peter Capaldi. He was in uh, World War Z. Um, hasn't really got much to his credits, like really like known-wise. Um, but he seems like a decent actor. I'm interested in seeing his take on the Doctor. Um, I've only recently got into the Doctor Who series, so I'm kind of like playing catch up a bit. I've seen some of like the later stuff, like the last couple of Christmas episodes. I saw the um, 50th anniversary with uh, David Tennant and Matt Smith. But other than that, I'm kind of like lost on a lot of it. But luckily it's on Netflix, so trying to play the catch up game with that. Um, second bit of TV news is Dennis Leary is returning to the uh, small screen um, since, he, um, since Rescue Me's been over. Um, he is now writing a new show called Sex and Drugs and Rock and Roll, where he plays an aging rock, like rock star, like singer, who's trying to get his band back together, even though they like hate his guts. Um, I'm interested in seeing it. I love Dennis Leary's performances. I loved Rescue Me. It's one of my favorite dramas. So yeah, um, I'm interested in seeing Dennis Leary being a rock singer. It's, it should be an entertaining little series. Um, and then the last bit of news that I've come across is Expendables 3 is officially PG-13. Um, I don't have a huge problem with this as long as it's an entertaining film, but I feel that with um, the Expendables the whole point was to kind of like recapture the R-rated 80s movies. And I feel like this the first two did that, so I feel like they're kind of like going off topic with making the third one PG-13. I understand that that broadens their audience, they'll be able to make more money off of it, but I thought the whole point was to pay homage to the R-rated movies like Commando and Sniper and, you know, all those other, like, R-rated 80s and 90s movies, so I feel like the whole PG-13 thing is kind of like a step backwards, and I feel like each movie gets more tame, like the first movie had all the profanity, all the violence, the second one they cut out the profanity because of Chuck Norris's contract, which is fine. Um, so they upped the violence a bit, but this one's going to be PG-13, so the violence is going to be dumbed down, the language is going to be dumbed down. I feel like if they're going to do an Expendables 4, they're just going to be fighting with water pistols, honestly. Like, it's just... That's how I feel. Will I still see Expendables 3? Maybe not in theaters, but um, I do intend on seeing it eventually one day. Um, and like I said, as long as it's entertaining, you know, I'm still interested in seeing it. But, um, I just feel like they're kind of, like, straying from the original point. Because, I mean, like, three's got, like, a huge cast. It's got Mel Gibson, Antonio Banderas. So, yeah, we'll see how that pans out. Um, so now we'll t talk about, um, the two movies that I saw this, you know, past week. Um, what did I see? Wolf of Wall Street. Um, brilliant film. Um, the writing is spectacular. The, um... Uh, the writer is Terrence Winter, who did some episodes of Boardwalk Empire, which is a fantastic series. Like, I've only seen the first season, but I've heard good things about the rest of it. And, yeah, the first season was amazing. So, um, so there's that. Um, the direction by Martin Scorsese, brilliant as usual. Martin Scorsese knocks it right out of the park with this one. Um, the acting, DiCaprio, Jonah Hill... Everybody else has, like, minor parts, like, the, the two big ones that you want to focus on are Jonah Hill and Leonardo DiCaprio. They blow it out of the water. Like, it is, they do such a great job. DiCaprio, he's one of my favorite actors acting right now. Um, he just has these great deliveries. Um, he just, he brings this presence to this character. It just, it just blew my mind. Um, the movie's three hours long, but it didn't really feel that long. It felt maybe, like two in a bit. Um, it does kind of feel like a little bit long after a while, but it keeps you engaged enough to not really keep like looking at your watch. Um, 
So yeah, I thought that Wolf of Wall Street was actually a really fantastic film. Um, it's definitely not for everybody. It's content. Um, you know, there's a lot that I could have done without. But um, it didn't completely hinder my experience of the movie. I wasn't like sitting there going, I can't believe I'm watching this. This is horrible. I can't believe I'm watching this. No, the, the rest of the movie was still engaging enough to kind of like, kind of, you know, okay, yeah, that's there. And I'm acknowledging it. But I'm going to focus more on this stuff. So, that's just me, personally. I know there's a lot of people that can't do that, and you know what, that's fine. So, um, I personally enjoyed Wolf of Wall Street. I thought it was a great film. And yeah, the three hours I was kind of worried about, but it, they handled it quite nicely, and they actually were able to keep the pacing pretty good. Um, and it probably has my favorite scene with Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, if I get around to doing a review of it, I'll probably talk about it then. But um, it involves him trying to get to his car, and then trying to get to Jonah Hill. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. So, that was Wolf of Wall Street. The other movie that I got to see was The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Um, this was a movie that I had heard a lot of good things about. This movie is directed by Ben Stiller, who also stars in it. This is Ben Stiller's, like, fifth directing movie, I think? Something like that. I know he did Zoolander, he did The Cable Guy, he did Tropic Thunder. I think he did one other thing, and now he's done this. So he's, this is either his fourth or fifth movie. He directs this movie so well. The cinematography is brilliant in this movie. It's such a gorgeous film to look at. Um, and I think it's probably my favorite Ben Stiller movie, both directing and acting. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you probably already knew that, because I posted that after I saw it. But, um, no, I just thought it was like a really well-done film. It's got a great message behind it. My only issue with it was I felt that it kind of dragged. Like, the movie's just a little under two hours, but um, it felt really long. Like, honestly, Wolf of Wall Street was three hours, and it felt a little shorter than Walter Mitty. Um, not to say that Walter Mitty was a bad movie because of it. I just felt that if they kind of cut some scenes shorter or kind of, like, added a little, little bit more to it, it would have moved the pacing a lot better. Overall, though, I thought it was actually a really well-done film. Um, I kind of hope that Ben Stiller sticks to this kind of directing. Like, I mean, Tropic Thunder is really funny. I enjoy Tropic Thunder. I haven't seen any of the other movies that he's directed, but they're all kind of those, like, goofy, one-off comedies that, you know, a lot of people do seem to like, but I feel like I'd watch them and go, okay, yeah, that was funny, but I'm just going to move on. But uh, I feel like if he continues to do stuff like Walter Mitty, I will definitely be intrigued because he did a really good job with this one. Um, yeah, that's kind of all I got to say like in a nutshell on Walter Mitty without going into too much detail. So I'm probably going to own that one one day. Not like I'm not going to like rush out and go get it right now. But, um, you know, one day when it's down at like 10 bucks, 8 bucks on Blu-ray kind of thing, I might consider picking it up if I've got the cash. But, um, yeah, I thought, yeah, it was really well done. So, um, that's it for this vlog. Um, like I said, I'm going to try and get um, some full-length reviews up for Wolf of Wall Street and uh, Secret Life of Walter Mitty. Also, I'm going to apologize for my sound on the last two videos. I checked them out after posting them and saw that they, I realized that they were super quiet. I don't know what was going on with my computer. I'm now using my phone's camera because it's better quality and picks up sound better um so yeah um and i apologize again for any like long breaks and stuff during the tammy review i kind of rewatched it and went i should have edited this 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 had a lot of stuff missing from it but it already had some views on it and yeah i just i don't know i couldn't quite hear it so i would i was afraid that i was gonna like miss some stuff so again i huge apologies for that um, and yeah, I'm going to try and make sure that my next reviews are edited a lot better and, um, that kind of stuff. So anyways, thank you for watching and, um, if you enjoyed what you saw here and you're interested to see what else I'm going to be, uh, coming out with, um, click the subscribe button. You can also follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Um, if you've got a Twitter account, just follow me on Twitter because basically my Facebook account is just... Um, Twitter linked to it, so when I type on, I'm usually more on Twitter than I am on Facebook, so when I type on Twitter, it just transfers over to Facebook, so if you don't have Twitter, you can follow me on Facebook. If you got Twitter, I would recommend following me on Twitter. So, anyways, thanks for watching, guys, and I uh, will see you in the future. Take care.